To stay productive while doing data science coding, I would use the Pomodoro technique where you do 25 minutes of dedicated work and you take a five minutes break. And this represents a cycle. And so you could essentially do several cycles in your coding or your study. And so today I'm going to be showing you how you could use the Streamlit Python library to code your very own Pomodoro web application. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So the first thing that you want to do is fire up your terminal. And we're going to be going to the desktop. That's where I kept my files. Streamlit folder. Going to the Pomodoro folder. And then you can see here that it has two files, app.py and style.css. And let's run the app. Okay, so I have to activate my conda first. And then I'll run it. Okay, so this is the Pomodoro web application that I developed in Python using Streamlit. And you can see here that the web app is fairly simple. And the obvious change that you could also observe here is I've been experimenting with the color. So let's say that you might be tired of the plain old white background. And so I discovered a way that you could hack Streamlit by modifying the CSS file, and then you could have it any color of your choosing. And so in this web application, I made it light blue. Okay, so after you click on start, you'll be noticing here that the countdown of 25 minutes is fairly quick because I added a multiplication factor to it. Otherwise, we'll have to wait 25 minutes for the countdown to work. And after 25 minutes, it says time for a break and it will continue with the five minutes break countdown. And then after that, it will tell you that the five minute break is over. And so this constitutes one cycle of the Pomodoro. And so you could essentially modify this web application to suit your need, or you could just reload the web app and start anew. Okay. And so let's get started in coding this Pomodoro web application. Let's open up the Adam. Okay. And I'll select the web app here. All right. So you're going to see here that I credited the source for the CSS file, which I got from a discussion on streamlit.io. And so you can check this link out. And so it will be referring to the CSS mentioned here and also here. But I have no use for the remote CSS, so I'm commenting it out. And so we're going to only making use of the local CSS file. And so let me show you that. Let's have a look. And so you're going to see that the style.css is fairly simple. And so the background here is the background color. And the background color is light blue. And the color here is the color of the text, which is blue color. And then you're going to be seeing here that this is the button. And I specified it to have a height and width of 12 EM. And so you could play around with this number to make the button smaller or bigger. Let's try eight. I'll save it. Is it smaller? Yeah, so I have to refresh it manually and now it's smaller. Or you could make it very big. And then we'll refresh it. Okay, and I guess that's too big. Or actually you could make it expand to let's say 50%. Let's try that. See if that works. 50%. Mm. So let's just keep it at 12 EM. And then the color is dark gray. All right. 
And so let's head over back to the app.py. So here we're essentially going to be making use of two libraries. We're obviously going to be importing streamlit, and then we're also going to be importing time. And as mentioned already, this is the CSS taken from this excellent discussion by Antfanilo. So I guess we could also remove the icon here as well. Commenting it out. Let's see if it has any change. Okay. So it didn't affect the emoji here. So that's good. All right. All right, cool. So I'll just comment out the CSS here, the remote one, and also the icon to make the code lighter. So you can feel free to delete these lines as well. Local CSS is referring to the style.css file that I've mentioned earlier on. All right, and here lines number 22 until 27 or 29 is going to be printing out the header part of the web app, which is right here, the Pomodoro app. Let's do some focus work in data science with this app and the link to Data Professor YouTube channel. And the time function was taken from two excellent resources. So I adapted it from geeksforgeeks.org and also from the documentation of the streamlit.io. So let's have a look at what this essentially will do. So here we're going to be defining a variable called button click. And then upon clicking on the start button, it will be initiating the following blocks of code here mentioned here. And so before doing that, we're going to be defining T1 and T2 to be 1500 representing 1500 seconds, which is 25 minutes. 300 represents the break time of five minutes. And so you can feel free to modify this if you like. So I'm sticking to the original Pomodoro, 25 minutes and five minutes of break. And then remember the button clicked variable that we defined earlier on, which is the start button here. So we define it to be if the button is clicked, we will do the following. And so we have two blocks of code here. And the first block of code will be the 25 minutes time that we're doing the work in data science. And then the second block here will be the five minutes break time. And so both blocks are identical with the exception of some renaming of the variables here. The minimums, seconds is renamed to add two at the end. Same thing for the timer variable as well. So you'll be seeing here that the seconds will be dividing the seconds here, 1500 and 300 by 60. So 300 divided by 60 will get five minutes and 1500 divided by 60 will get 25 minutes. And then here we'll be formatting the times. And so you'll be seeing the minutes followed by the seconds here. And then we're going to be having a large font for this text of the time countdown. And then here is the time. So instead of one second, I made it 0 0.01. So one second will be the actual time. So we could try that. So in order to make an actual Pomodoro, you have to keep this to be one. But for testing purposes, I made it 0 0.01 so that it'll be faster. So let's try this again. All right, and now it's the actual time. Question of the day. Let me know in the comments down below if you're using the Pomodoro technique when you're coding your data science workflow, and I'd love to hear from you. And if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science and please enjoy the journey.